Hello and welcome to my video review of the Xbox 360 version of Afro Samurai. Please be warned this video does contain a spoiler or two. Afro Samurai is a third person hack and slash action game putting you in control of the title character Afro. You're playing in a cyber feudal Japan on a mission of vengeance. The story revolves around the concept of two headbands, number one granting the owner godlike powers and number two which gives the owner the right to challenge number one for their headband. Afro's father was previously number one, but was defeated and decapitated by Justice, number two at the time. This all transpired in front of Afro as a child, his severed father's head landing at his feet. Afro swears vengeance and now holds the number two headband, tracking down his father's killer. Make your daddy proud. Challenge me. When you're ready to duel a god. <laughs> the game follows the story of some major alterations and flashbacks to build character. Some of these flashbacks also happened in the anime, The Schoolyard Massacre for example, which has its own level in the game. To be honest, some of the alterations are inexplicable, for example, Justice already being long dead when you get to him. Of course, the fight is replaced with an internal fight against Justice, but I wonder why they bothered changing it. Most levels are simple in nature. Progress a little, be approached by enemies, kill said enemies, progress further. A couple of the levels throw in some platforming elements to the mix, but these are all very simple in nature given the lack of acrobatics that you can perform. Kick off a wall, run along a wall, and hang off a wooden pole. You can find some collectibles in any given level. <laughs> Mementos which grant you extra attacks, and a number of Otsuro bears which additionally restore your health. In addition to this, there is a mini game of sorts available in some combat encounters. It's called Body Part Poker, and the idea is to lop off certain parts of the enemy's body to make sex. Three heads, three legs, or an android head, leg, and hand are all examples. It serves no purpose outside of achievement, health and focus restoring, and experience, but it's fun when it does pop up. Speaking of experience, you can also get some experience from killing. Level ups don't really seem to have much of an effect on gameplay aside from gaining new combos. You probably get more life or health or something, but it's not really noticeable. Afro Samurai has no on-screen HUD. I like it, it makes the game feel almost cinematic in a sense. This of course means that the only giveaway that you or an enemy is dying is to look out for the bloodstained clothes and the sound of your heartbeat. The best part about Afro Samurai is the combat. Your attacks are fluid and easy to aim and chain well. The blood spurts from the slices are exaggerated and body parts go flying off. It's easy to just lose yourself in the orgy of violence that ensues in some of these encounters. You also get the ridiculously cool focus attacks, turning the game world black and white temporarily as you time a perfect slice, instantly killing most enemies. You can also reflect bullets, cool in idea but hard in practice, for me at least. Focus charges up as you perform combos, and if you store up enough, you can release it all at once and over-focus and get to run around killing everything in slow motion in one hit. I also really like the unique loading screens. Rather than a static now loading screen, you're instead treated to some of the things in Afro's mind. Facts about bears, his father's head drifting across the horizon, the shadow of justice laughing. Any loading screen of course is a shame, but these keep the game still rather immersive. <laughs> and yet, the game still comes up lacking. The selection of enemies is pitiful, hell I could name most of them here. Ronin, ninja, female ninja, big swordsman dude, giant dude, android, explosive android, and samurai. Add in some bosses and that's pretty much it. Sadly, the game is also frightfully easy outside of two to three boss battles, one of which spikes so much in difficulty that it took me a good three to four tries to complete. Basic enemies simply will not kill you unless you literally put down the controller. I only ever died when experimenting with bullet reflection, which I'm utterly useless at. Platforming parts are awkward and the checkpoint system isn't logical. Sometimes if you fall because of the horrible jump mechanics, you'll be restored at a checkpoint a minute further away, despite knowing there's a checkpoint you passed only 4 seconds before falling off. The camera is player controlled, which can also make it a hassle in the more hectic encounters as you'll soon find yourself staring at Afro's face next to a wall. Lack of variety and levels and difficulty also means that as good as the combat system is, you'll get bored of it within a few hours. The music, while not my sort of thing, is good. Awesome. 
Afro's model is pretty good, as is Ninja Ninja's, and the art style of the game is great in my opinion, and the voice acting on their part is not as strong as it is in the anime, but still very good. If I was still alive, I would pretend it was because you loved me. However, the same cannot be said about the majority of your enemies. Off-sync voices and the same models being recycled over and over again. Not particularly good ones at that. Some of the effects could have been better too. Truth be told, when the opponent is low on health, they look like they're hiding a red glow stick under their clothing, rather than, say, soaking their clothes in blood. There are some unlockables for players who complete the game. Hard mode, music, art, concept slideshows. Pretty nice stuff for a fan of the anime, or people who enjoyed the game but found it lacking in challenge. Afro Samurai is a typical hack and slash game. Good fun combat, but too much of it. The models for the lead cast are great, but the enemies have generic ones. Platforming elements were added for variety, but the mechanics are horrible. It's far too easy, with inexplicable difficulty spikes at one or two points. And it's short in length, with things like hard mode, which should have been available from the beginning. Overall, I give the game a 58% score and a rental rating. The game lasted me about 12 hours with stops. There's a hard mode, but frankly, after 12 hours, I'd had enough of the game. Who knows, maybe I'll go back to it one day. Thanks for listening. This is Metal Dragon with my video review of the Xbox 360 version of Afro Samurai.